Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. After 14 long years, I've finally done it. I've finally got 10,000 subscribers. So welcome to my 10,000 subscribers special. In this video, I'm going to be telling you all my top 10,000 games of all time. Not really, but what I am going to do is talk you through the 14 year long journey that led me up to this point on YouTube. I'm as much of a digital hoarder as I am of physical things, so I have every single file not just every single uploaded video, but every single file I have ever made since the beginning, since 2007. So I've got hard drives full of the stuff and it's been really interesting to look back over it all. If you're new here, it might be interesting for you to find out where I got my start and what led me up to where I am today. And if you've been around on the channel for a while, I hope this brings back some really good memories. Before I start, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Bifrost Bridge Studios. They haven't announced anything new for a while, but if you go and follow them over on Twitter, you can keep up with all the latest news on their games, on their graphic novels, and on all the other stuff that they're working on. There is a lot to look at. So with that said, let's get started and let's take a look at my 14 year long journey to 10,000 subscribers. Here we go. So, my journey on YouTube began way back in 2007 when I first got my own laptop. At the time, I only had Windows Movie Maker and I didn't even have a camera back then. I had a webcam on the laptop and I used to actually tilt it backwards and film my TV screen on the wall. And like I said, I've still got every single file that I've ever made. Way back before I even got that laptop, I've got files going all the way back to our Windows 95 computer, but I actually found the first ever video that I did using the webcam on my laptop, so have a look at this, it's kind of ridiculous. And once I played around a bit with Windows Movie Maker, I started making Let's Play videos. Okay, this is Nick Tendo. welcome to my first ever video playthrough. Now you guys will be able to see why I think that Rocket Knight Adventures is such a good game. Of course I didn't have any capture software or anything back then so like I said I just used the webcam and then for Christmas that year a few months later my parents actually got me my first proper camcorder and I absolutely loved it. So back in 2008 when I first got this camcorder I was a huge fan of the Angry Video Game Nerd so of course the first thing that I did was make my own spoof of it called the Angry Schmurgle Nerd. No I don't know what I was thinking but I really enjoyed making these videos at the time. Yes, smear roll nerd and tap tap smear roll productions presents the best and worst of Sega Mega Drive. Hello I'm Nick Westwood. Today we'll be showing you the best and worst of Sega. This game is so bad. No, it's not just the worst game on the Genesis. It's the most boring and frustrating game you will ever play. Ever. As you can tell, the quality really wasn't very good at all. But it lasted me for a good year or so, and I made loads of videos to upload to YouTube. I did some Let's Plays. I really got into editing back then as well, and it wasn't long until I reached 100 subscribers, and I made my 100 subscribers special. Hello, Nick Tendo we here. Welcome to my 100 subscribers special. For the first part of this video, I'm going to be showing you my top 100 games of all time. Here we go. Mario Land 2. Rayman 2, The Great Escape. Pikmin 2. Super Monkey Ball. Sonic 1. Super Mario. Thanks to everyone for subscribing, and I hope in three years time I can be here again doing my 200 subscriber special. Unfortunately, just after that, the camcorder that I was using up until that point started to get really bad. The video quality and the audio quality decreased dramatically, and you can hear that in some of my later Let's Plays from that time. I'm playing this on the Wii with the GameCube controller, because that's definitely the best way to play this game. But thankfully, just before I moved off to uni in 2010, my parents bought me another camcorder. And this one was in HD. I was so excited, although I didn't quite get the settings right for my first ever HD video, and it was still in 480p, and it was in 4x3, but I actually letterboxed it that way to make it widescreen. I still didn't really have a clue what I was doing. This time, I'm in HD. So click the button down there, and put me in HD. And basically this camera is what I used for the next three or four years while I was at university. Um, if you've been watching my channel and stuff, you'll know that I've moved to university recently. So uh, here's a quick tour of my room at uni. You can see controllers everywhere. I've brought the N64 with me. Uh, Wii, PS2. 
I didn't make a lot of videos during this time, I was really busy with other things, but at least I managed to do some content, so have a look at what I managed to do over the four years while I was at university. Also while I was looking through those files I found these amazing screenshots from back in 2011. Just look at how much YouTube has changed since then, it's almost a completely different website. I don't know why I did, but I'm so glad I took those screenshots. Hello Nintendo Wii here. Uh, this is my new room. As the 3DS is nearly approaching its first year on sale, I thought now would be a good time to take a look back at the um, some of the better games released for the system so far. Hello Nintendo, we're here. It's been a while, welcome back to my channel. As you might have noticed, I have a new room now. Um, I'm living somewhere else at uni this year. Hello Nintendo, we're here. Welcome to Games I Got Recently, episode 11. And then after that I moved back home and I decided that I wanted to focus a lot more on my YouTube channel. So I actually got a full time job around that time as well and I actually spent my first pay packet on a camera that I'd been researching a lot at work. In literally every single minute of work that I wasn't working I was on Google looking at the Sony RX100 Mark II or Mark III and I actually bought the Mark II and I could not have been happier even though it didn't actually have the fold up screen that the Mark III did and I used this for a good few years before I bought the Mark III. And as you probably noticed I haven't put up many videos. That's because I've been making videos for work. Something which is completely different for me. Uh, somehow they found out that I've got a camera and I know how to edit videos so... I had a lot of time to think while I was at work as well and I actually decided that I wanted to try and make weekly videos and actually make this YouTube channel into something that I could keep going with in the future. The weekly videos at the time didn't exactly last that long. I only managed to do I think 30 something episodes of a series that I was making called Retro Game A Week. Welcome to a new series that hopefully I'll be keeping up with. This is called Retro Game A Week. The first game we'll be looking at is Sparkster for the Super Nintendo. The game was made in 1994 by Konami. So I ended up doing 34 episodes of Retro Game A Week and I have to say that I ended the series on a high note. I put a lot of effort into this one. I even did a really funny skit in the middle so I'll let this play out now. Enjoy! I'll you the actual story about how Super Monkey Ball came to be. My job's on the line here. We need to come up with something, and fast. I've gathered you all here today because we need to come up with a oh new game God. idea. Here he goes again. Is anyone even paying attention here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Nope. I don't know about you, but this game needs to have an animal mascot. <laughs> I like monkeys. You're all just sitting around like a bunch of fools, eating bananas, Playing with monkeys, you over there just throwing your balls around. Well, how about... Sorry boss, I got nothing. Just wait until Nintendo hears about this. I ended up giving this series up for two reasons. One, because I went to Japan about halfway through and I started doing videos about all of the pickups that I got from Japan, which I really enjoyed doing. I'm very excited to say that tomorrow I'm going to Japan. I can't wait, it's going to be so much fun. We've got so much planned. This is actually the fourth time I've been in here now, but let's go and take a look, see if I can pick anything up place to look. And they also have a lot of loose Famicom games. And right at the back of the shop, there used to be a lot more last time I went, but this time they only seem to have a few. But you can pick up some loose Hue cards for the PC Engine for fairly cheap. And just like the last shop, this one has a cabinet in the back full of super expensive games. As well as that, I also started working on my own game around that time as well, called Super Donuts. And if you've been around on the channel for a while, you might remember that I used to do quite a few dev diary kind of videos about my game Super Donuts. I could make something simpler, but I just want to, I really want to make this. I don't know why, I just feel like I really want to make this. So it's going to happen, no matter how long it takes. So here's some of the different ideas for the different levels. I wanted each level to have a different sort of gimmick or a unique feature that's unique to that level which I've kind of managed to do. And then when it got released, I actually did a two hour long developer's commentary for the game as well. Today I'm gonna to be doing a 100% walkthrough of Super Donuts. So one of the reviews on iTunes actually complained about the fact that you can't hurt the enemies. You actually can. 
for one thing you can hit them with these power-ups like the one I'm using now which all last 10 seconds as you can see at the top there's a bit of a timer. After Super Donuts had come out though I decided to focus entirely 100% on YouTube and I went back to doing weekly videos. Around that time I'd actually changed my channel name as well from Nintendo Wii to Let's Play Retro Games because at the time I thought that's what I wanted to do so I spent another few years doing Let's Plays and kind of Let's Play related content but to be honest, it didn't really work out that well. You might have noticed that I've changed my channel. It's no longer called Nintendo Wii. I'm renaming it to Let's Play Retro Games, which I think makes a lot more sense. It's exactly what I do on this channel. So I hope you like the new name and there's loads of cool videos coming this way. I actually much more enjoyed doing the videos where I would talk through my game collection and do pickups videos and tours of different events and things like that. Welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. Tonight I've been invited by Games You Loved and Numskull to check out a new quarter arcade Pac-Man cabinet. The Pac-Man arcade machine itself was amazingly detailed and it felt really good to play as well. I really can't wait to get my hands on my own one. And I so at the end of 2018, just a few years ago now, I did a final channel rebrand and I think this is going to be the one that I stick with. This is what you know and love today as Retro Breaks. So let's see how this latest iteration of my channel got its start. Welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. Let's Play Games? I love Let's Play Games. Not Let's Plays, we're doing pickups. Yep, yeah, no, Let's Play. Look at all these amazing oh. DS games I got recently. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Oh, this can't keep happening. Got to fix this. And then, once Retro Break was a thing, I spent a lot of time coming up with ideas for the channel, and that's basically what I've been working with up until today. I did a lot of game event tours, I did a lot of pickup videos. Of course, I went back to Japan at the start of last year, just before Covid hit, and I had a fantastic time there as well. Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. I'm here in Akihabara to show you all the best places to buy your retro games. I've found so many great shops, so let's go and have a look. And as you can see, the first time I went down there, it was incredibly busy. So I managed to go back a few days later and have a look. It's and when I got back from Japan, that's when lockdown started, but thankfully I had a load of games from while I was out there that I could use to fill the void. And then a few months into lockdown, I really feel like that's where my modern sort of content began. I couldn't go to events anymore like I used to, so I had to kind of rethink what I wanted to show on this channel. Today I'm on my way to the London Gaming Market. Or well, that's what I would have said this time of year, but unfortunately, as I'm sure you all know, here in the UK we're still very much in lockdown. And it seems like you guys have really been enjoying what I came up with since then, because since that time my subscriber growth has just gone like that, and I cannot believe that I've got to 10,000 already. I am so thankful to each and every one of you, and I've got loads of exciting plans for the future. As you can see, I've got over 200 videos planned so rest assured I am not going anywhere. You might have noticed if you've actually been on my channel itself that I've actually started colour coding the different playlists on the channel and that's kind of my plan for the near future is to fill out those five different playlists full of videos so that people who enjoy a certain topic can go back and watch them and hopefully there's a few of you that will watch every video that comes out every Friday. I'm not planning on stopping the weekly videos anytime soon. So my immediate plans for the future, I'm going to do a lot more homebrew videos of course, I've been really loving doing those recently. Game pickups and game shopping, that's not going anywhere. I really hope that when the world opens up in a few months time, fingers crossed at least, I get to go back to some more game conventions and gaming markets because that was one of my favourite things to do on the channel and I really want to do more of that sort of content as well. Retrospectives and gaming history, that's something that I want to do a lot more of. Unfortunately, they take a lot more time than some of the other videos that I do, so they won't be that regular, but I do have some great plans. And I would actually like to go back and revisit some of the earlier games that I did retrospectives for as well. I really want to do an updated one on SSX, I think that would be really good. Discussion videos, I like doing those because I can kind of talk about different topics without having to sort of dedicate an entire script and stuff to it so you'll be seeing a few more discussion type of videos and it seems like people really enjoy them as well like the one I did about 
Game Collecting Addiction, that one did really well. So I'd love to come up with more style of videos like that as well, where you guys can sort of sound off in the comments about your own thoughts and feelings on the topics. And of course, game and hardware reviews. Things like the Retro Freak, things like the Retron 5, they were two of my favourite videos to do over the past few years. I would love to get more hardware and talk about things like that as well. So there's loads to look forward to. I really hope you're looking forward to it all. And I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and my kind of introspective look back at the 14 years that's led me up to this point. Here's to 14 more, so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next week for the next episode. Goodbye!